<laughs> if you're searching for the best pizza in town, there's a good place for you to turn. That is Yelp. The website is famous for its reviews from customers. More than 11 years after launching Yelp, host more than 90 million critiques. The businesses mentioned cover 32 countries, but with success comes major challenges. I'll say business owners have accused Yelp of bias toward competitors who pay for ad space. Customers have faced lawsuits over negative reviews, and as a number of review, as a, as a number of reviews grows, is what she's trying to say. So does the risk that some are fraudulent. Jeremy Stoppelman is the CEO and co-founder of Yelp. We welcome you back to the table. Yeah, welcome. Great to be here. Thanks I for having me. I remember last time you were here, Yelp. Do you remember what it stands for? Yelp, Yelp help. Yelp yeah. yellow pages. That's yellow where the pages and help. From. I always yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, so here it is. 90 million people have access to Yelp on their cell phones every day. And the research shows that those Yelp reviews de directly affect people's businesses. Was that your intention when you started back in the day? Absolutely. If you go back to 2004 when Yelp was created, what did we have then? We had the Yellow Pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was just pay to play. It was essentially a big book of advertisements. And now with Yelp, you can tap into the community around you. You've got this entire city right here in New York, and everybody is sharing their favorite recommendations. Can, and their negative uh, recommendations, too. How, can you, trust, too. Yeah, how yeah. can you trust the consumer reviews? How could you not trust it if there wasn't any negativity? Mm -hmm. I mean, if everybody was five stars, how would you distinguish, like, what are the really great businesses? And so that's the beauty of Yelp, is it, it reflects the real world, which is the good and the bad, and yeah. a lot of good. And then the challenge comes, though, because some people want to get the system. Mm -hmm. That comes with power. Mm -hmm. So as Yelp becomes more useful and millions of people are relying on it, then sure, everybody's looking to figure out how do I get better reviews? How do I rank higher? Just like, you know, websites try to rank higher in Google too. Okay, yeah. but to answer the question then, how when you're on and I use Yelp myself, how does Yelp determine which reviews are the ones that you see? It's, a, it's simply looking at the ratings, so the quantity of ratings and uh, what the, the star rating is between one and, f one and five. And then we're also looking at what did you type in? So if you search for something specific, like I wanted falafel, then we're trying to match you up to places that both are really highly rated, but then also match on falafel. But there's also been examples of defamation lawsuits, people who wrote negative reviews. Somebody was fined, you know, seven, $750,000. Another woman was ordered to pay $1,000 after she made a negative review. So how is a consumer protected? Because we think if I have a bad experience, why can't I say it was not good? I mean, it all starts Without with free repercussions. speech. Yeah. Free speech. It's good to live in America. You know, it's a nice place <laughs> yes. when it comes to that thing. And, you know, certain businesses have, have tried to create these gag clauses. And so they slip it in there and some of the paperwork you're signing, maybe when you're checking in at a hotel, and they say, yeah, oh, if you write what? anything, yeah. it, it says, if you write anything negative about us, we're going to charge you an extra $500. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make sense, and it wouldn't hold up in court anyways. And, in fact, there's a bill working its way through, through Congress to protect against that. I want to ask you about the industry at large because you have been very critical of Google. In fact, you said Google has completely lost its mind. It has. How? <laughs> It's really compromised the consumer. And so if you pull up on your mobile phone right now and do a search for, say, Sushi New York right here, you're actually not even getting the web anymore. You're getting Google. And Google doesn't necessarily have the best results. They don't have all of the content Yelp has or OpenTable has or any of the other competitors out there. So it used to be this turnstile. You just searched, searched Google and it sent you to the best place on the web. And that's not how it works anymore. What do you mean they're getting Google? You mean they're getting what, what advertisers pay? Google has its own version of Yelp mm -hmm. that doesn't have all the content. And they're trying to promote that because that's where the advertising revenue is for them. But that's not necessarily what's best for consumers. But Google has denied search bias. They haven't necessarily denied it. They've said, this is what we're going to do. And the FTC took a look at it a while ago and was actually quite conflicted internally. There's a lot of mystery around what happened with that process. Then why, do, do, why don't they have a bigger challenger? Mm -hmm. They do have a challenger in local, which is us. And, no, I and know, but you know what I'm so saying. Forth. I mean, the majority of search. Yeah, I think in web search, Google. like there is a network effects to it. So as you get more data, you become more intelligent, you become smarter, and so that allows you to serve up better results. Yeah. And also that because they're making so much money, they're able to be the default everywhere. So when you type in a, a web search in your iPhone, guess where you go? You go straight to Google, mm. and that's because Google's paying millions and millions of dollars to Apple to have that position. So you're supporting uh, legislation that protects reviewers, uh, that protects the consumers. What is missing online to protect us? I mean, one of the main areas that we're focused is uh, 
fairly technical area of the law called anti-slap legislation. And it's so uh, when a person writes a review that maybe is controversial, maybe is negative, sometimes business owners want to sue them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of states actually have very strong protections that allow the courts to take a quick look and then throw out that lawsuit. But they vary by state, and we'd love to see that put in place at the federal level so that everyone is covered in the same way. All right, Jeremy Stoppelman, great to have you here at the table. Thanks for having me again. Thank you.